If you've ever played in a decent online room, you've probably eaten a fair share of back spams and traps already. But did you know that there's a metagame that's played whenever a trapping battle starts? Today we're covering how to use items properly when in the front, or if you're in the back how to avoid them. For those of you who are wondering what even is trapping, trapping is a skill in Mario Kart Wii when players in the front place nanos, fibs, or if the opponent is close enough, backspam greens, reds, or bombs in places that are very hard to avoid, normally around blind corners. Not to be confused with blocking, which is similar to trapping, except instead of placing traps on blind corners, you use them to block shortcuts or lines. We'll be covering both of these in this video, by the way. Also, before we get to the fun stuff, I want to mention I'll be using a lot of competitive lingo that basically allows us as a team to communicate vital information in a very short phrase. Like for instance, Toad Factory has a very common trap spot inside this room with a lot of sirens and smokes. So in a competitive war, I might say, nanotite red room. That means that there's a banana on the inside line inside this room. I'll be sure to make a video in the future about these competitive location names, so if you're interested in learning about that, be sure to subscribe. But for now, I'll just try to show the location as best as I can. So, going in order. Toad Factory has a lot of trap spots. The second turn after the Stompers has a railing that could hide a Nana pretty well. After that, like I said in the example, is the Red Room, where traps are very common due to the chain between the item set before the conveyor and after the Red Room. Some higher level players will block the cut as well, giving them a nice break if they make the shortcut shroomless. Coconut Ball. There are three trap spots, Down Spiral, Up Spiral, and Greenhouse. Now would actually be a good time to bring up mind games. At a low level room, the better players would just place everything somewhat tight, and most people behind them would just run into the traps. However, other good players would realize that there's probably a trap tight, so they'll go wide intentional. So what ends up happening is all the good players wouldn't eat the trap, and first wouldn't have that much of a break. So now the first place player might intentionally want to trap wide. That way not only does it get players who think he trapped tight, but he could also take a tight line next lap. This is especially prominent on the up spiral and the down spiral, as once you commit to a line, it's really hard to adjust mid turn to avoid a trap, making trapping a lot more like a rock, paper, scissors game. This is one of the more interesting metas that's actually still being developed to this day, and also one of the reasons why I personally think MKWE is still alive, as the meta clearly still has more room to grow. DKS, or DK Summit, has a common trap spot right after the half pipe after the cannon. As again, if you take the exact same line as the player ahead of you, you can't avoid anything that he might place back. Also, some people trap the shortcut and after the cannon. Warriors Goldmine has a number of trap spots, but they all include the three downward sections where after you take a drift and start heading downward, any trap place can be lethal. Remember what I mentioned on Coconut Mall about the mind game of going wide or tight. Generally in Worldwide, you won't have to worry too much about wide traps, but it's still good to be aware of, especially if you know you're playing against someone who's really good at the game. Also, you can block the shortcut entrance on the side whenever the minecarts come up. Koopa Cape's most common trap spot is at the bottom of the waterfall. However, bananas and fibs aren't affected by the water flow, so the big green shell tone sometimes has a few traps hiding behind it. Rumble Volcano? You do something I'm going to call respawn trapping. Basically planting traps right in front of a player who took respawn cut. It's primarily used on this course, but it can be used anywhere. If for instance, Force falls off and you see him respawning, you could trap him so he can't keep up with you passing. Moonview Highway. The horseshoe inside line is the most common trap spot, as you'll be sandwiched between the oncoming traffic, giving you not a whole lot of room for error, add a trap on top of that and you've got a really deadly line to follow. So in some cases, you might have to take the center line instead. Bowser's Castle has one very prominent block spot that stands out compared to the rest, and that's the block for the half pipe or the glitch. Now I want to mention not many people online even go for the half pipe, so I want to bring up another concept which is when to hold items and when to throw. Rudimentary item theory shows that you have a 20% chance of pulling a fib every time you cycle through a box. That's why top level players would constantly abuse the fact that they could hold up to two items, that way minimizing the chance of them pulling a fib, which could result in them getting redded. However, this ends up leading into another level of mind games, which keeps your opponent behind you guessing what kind of item you have in your inventory. Rainbow Road, just like Warrior's Goldmine, has a downward section that has boost panels that camouflage bananas really well, making them solid trap spots. Also, just like any other cannon track, you could trap after the cannon. And just like any track that has boost panels, you could trap the boost panels as well. Actually, it's almost better to trap on boost panels because then not only do they spin out, but they also don't get the boost either. DSDS has two trap spots that I want to bring up. One is trapping the shroomless cut ramp, which if that happens, you'll have to do a spin drift on the side, 
and clear the gap like shown, or do a cart strat by bouncing and jumping over the grass hitting a different part of the ramp. And the second trap spot being after the mud cut, sometimes spinning players out and straight into the water. Wait a second, Art, you're missing two other very common trap spots on DSDS. And yes, I know. The last turn on DSDS and the second turn after the first item set are both very popular hotspots. But frankly, there are too many of these 90 degree trap turn spots in the game. So instead of wasting your time listing them all out, I'll explain how apexes work. That way you could avoid any 90 degree turn trap, not just these ones. That'll come a little bit later in the video, so keep an eye out for that. I'm sure if you've played online even once on Waluigi Stadium, you've had the very first boost ramp trapped on the left side of the corner. However, another good place to use your trap is to trap at the bottom of the trick cancel ramp. Also, the last two turns are quite evil, adding a trap on top of that, and you could really mess up someone's line. BC3, basically every right turn is a nano death trap. However, players would commonly trap the cut, making this track one of the most volatile and interesting tracks to watch, in my opinion. DK Jungle Parkway. The main thing to be mindful of when it comes to traps on this course is either after the cannon, just a cannon cannon track, or on the bridge. There's not too much to mention after that, just stay mobile and remember in some cases it's better to slow down than to spin out. Peach Gardens. I know I said I won't really mention 90 degree trap spots until later, but Peach Gardens is a bit of an exception, as the two grass patches are great trap spots, just like Moonview, the given line is so small that placing a trap makes it very hard to avoid. Also, some players trap after the cut and the last two turns. DK Mountain, just like DK Jungle Parkway, the bridge tends to be a hot spot for trapping goodness. However, you could also trap right in front of the shortcut, just like DKS. Or the long winding arc, which is also a very popular backspam spot. Side note, if there's a green or banana on the bridge, you could actually jump clean over it. Granted, most of the time you shouldn't risk it, but in certain situations, it's great to know that the option is there. Finally, BC64. Bowser's Castle for the N64 has two common trap spots, being a blocked rail or a trap spiral. Just like BC3, BC64 has a lot of right angles, and every right turn is a potential trap spot. So now let's talk about apexes. In this example on BC64, after the moving thwomp, a lot of people like to back stuff, so they end up taking a line somewhat similar to this, depending on where the thwomp was. Now some players after him might take an inside line, or an early apex. The problem with an early apex line on BC64 is you hard drift to the left, but you still end up on the outside lane. Compare that to a traditional apex. Taking a traditional line, you get a lot more options because you could start to drift much earlier or later, depending on what you want to do. Most players tend to take this line because the thwomp can be a bit of a pain to deal with, but just because you have more options with a traditional line doesn't mean you won't hit anything, as once you commit to an angle, you probably won't be able to adjust mid-flight. Which brings us to the last apex, the late apex. When you do a late apex, you end up with a much tighter line giving you the most options for entering a turn. However, the downside is late apexes tend to be slower due to the way that Mario Kart Wii speed management is. If you're trying to avoid traps, you should be taking late apexes. If you're in the front, you should be taking traditional or in some cases you can't help it, early apexes. So now that you have the option to avoid any line you want by taking late apexes, Take what we've learned in Coconut Mall about trapping mind games, or if you're close enough to see the player ahead, watch and try to avoid his line. Finally, I want to bring up a few topics I couldn't put anywhere else. First being that you should always keep in mind the item location and player inventory. So for example, if you drop the back spam on Coconut Mall, and you watch the minimap and you see that no one hits it, you should remember that it's there waiting for you on lap 2. And for the player inventory, keep in mind which item the player ahead of you has. That way, if you want to throw a red shell, you could kind of tell what item he's going to get and give yourself a higher chance of it connecting. Last topic I want to cover is online backspams. Due to the culture of MK Wii, as everything is done online, you shouldn't trail people when they have an item, obviously. As by the time you see the item getting used, most of the time it's too late to avoid, making some very obvious backspam spots deadly. All in all, just keep your eyes on the road and try to stay sharp. You never know what might be waiting for you on the other side. Hi, Ark speaking, and thanks for watching this video. Originally, I was planning to make this video only about 5 minutes long, talking about basic concepts of trapping, but it eventually became almost like a montage and a compilation. It turned out to be a bigger project than I anticipated. Anyway, if you liked the video, be sure to let me know by liking and commenting. And if you want to support me in continuing to do what I'm already doing, why don't you subscribe and check me out over on Twitch. That's all from me. Thanks for watching and happy racing.